Welcome to Synchronicity. My guest this week is Gazit Chaya. They are a awesome person who really, really opened my eyes up to this safe and sound protocol and a lot of other things. Gazit has a way of kind of like breaking down something that's a relatively like traditional clinical protocol that's like administered by licensed therapists, but is clearly very woo. We like the woo people. More importantly, we like people who can hold multiple perspectives at the same time. That's a nice thing for this day and age. You know those people? They're fine. It's it's getting harder and harder to find those types of people. People are getting locked into certain perspectives and ideas. And, uh, you know, we're trying to not do that, but it can be a thing. Anyway, not judgment, blah, 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 all that stuff. Anyway, amazing person. You're going to love it. I, I guarantee this episode is going to be up your alley. Uh, the Safe and Sound Protocol, if you want to find out more, you can check out Gazit's uh, website, N experiencer, a n experiencer.com. There will be links in the show notes for everything. A reminder here's the deal I know there are ads now at the beginning and the end of this show, and not everyone likes those ads. Guess what? On Patreon, no ads. I upload the episodes with no ads. You can get those plus bonus episodes, plus weekly readings, plus live streams once a month. It's a pretty cool place. We're having fun. I just got back from Lake Placid, saw the eclipse. The totality, it was dope. It was really awesome. It was totally worth it. And guess what, guys? I looked at it directly with no glasses. Not leading up to it, not when the sun is shining, but in totality, you look without glasses. It's totally fine. I'm not blind. Don't believe the people. Not advocating staring at the sun. I'm just saying you don't have to be all freaked out. Also, no bad vibes, no weird juju or whatever. It was totally cool. Totally fine. The hardest part was traveling with three kids. That's the hardest thing. Uh, three, you turn into a four hour drive. We left the day of because like, fuck it. Let's make it as difficult as possible. Other than that, it was totally fine. Really just like a lovely, lovely trip. And uh, I'm really glad I got to see it. I hope the eclipse was nice for you. Uh, Mercury retrograde continues. We're good. We're getting through it, guys. 2024, do we feel the shifts? I don't think it is quite settled in yet into like what, like, it will be, but we are certainly moving more towards what it will be. And we know this is a transitionary time and it's just like, let's just do it. Let's get through it. And maybe the SSP will help you, the Safe and Sound Protocol. I think this is something that can be of assistance to a lot of people. Uh, many people, including myself, have kind of been in survival mode for the past two years or so. And that's maybe been throwing some of us off who have just not really experienced too much of that in our lives. And this is something that I think could help a lot of people. So, you know. I think you're really going to like it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, connect with Gazit. She's amazing. You are going to enjoy this episode. Without further ado, here is Gazit Chaya. Recording now. That's just so I don't forget. But really, thank you for for taking the time to do this. Oh my gosh, it's such a joy, and I'm so sorry that you got the stomach bug, and then my kid got it. Oh my um, too. god! It was I I I was really close to going to the hospital. I never think that I need to go to the hospital for everything, just because the prospect of sitting in an emergency room totally. while also not feeling well is like worse than the idea of like just toughing it out. But I had never had stomach cramps like that. And I had a stomach bug a few months ago that my kids got. And it was just like your stomach hurts, you puke, you get it out. Yeah. You kind of feel like shit the next day and you're fine. This was just like my stomach. It was like, I'm like maybe there's something wrong with me. Yeah. And then I came, I was on my way. I was going to go to the hospital. And then I was like, I got to puke. I don't want to be puking in the hospital mm -hmm. waiting room. And the hospital is like five minutes from my place. So I was like, I'll go there. I puked. I slowly started to feel better, and I was like, holy shit, that wow. was wild. But I'm just kind of taking it as a warning to be healthy. It was like, you know, just be as healthy as you can right now because it Honestly, was Honestly, I think it might have to do with the eclipse or something because there's seven yes. people in my orbit that have had a stomach bug in this week. <sighs> and none of them so are local. fucking weird. Yeah, it was really weird. I... I don't remember that in 
and I really never remember. I never remember thinking like I might need to go to the hospital. It's like maybe something is seriously wrong because like they're like you read the things on Google and it's like, hey, you know, if the pain's a nine or a 10, I'm like, this is like a seven or eight. So wow. I'm like if this and it was it lasted from like the middle of the night until like, uh, I don't know noon 1 p.m the next day and was getting worse like in the morning and i was like fuck yeah. i told my wife i was like i think i've got to go but well the 50 yeah and then it was fine. like a digestive yeah. upgrade thing that i was reading about yesterday mm. and i wonder like i wonder if there's something happening because they're like you know it was jess's kid it was you it was my kid it was like four other people i work with and they're all in different places yeah. in the world so it's really weird it's, it's, it is eclipsy. I'm. I uh, let. Well, let's get started. I mean, I'm excited to talk about so many of the things that you are interested in that I don't know about or I know a little bit about, but would love a further explanation. Yeah. You came super highly recommended mm -hmm. from Jessa, who, which whenever she says something like, "I think this is really something," I at least look into it. Sometimes I'm like, I get it, and sometimes I'm like, I I don't get it. This time. <laughs> That what she mentioned was SSP, the mm -hmm. safe and sound protocol. Mm -hmm. But I know the 55th gene key stuff, like I really want to delve into that too. But I'd be curious how you kind of discovered SSP and if you could give like an overview of what it is. Like I want to talk about a bunch of different yeah, stuff, sure. but like that I am particularly interested in for a variety of reasons. But I want to kind of like hear from you, like how you found it, what it is, because yeah. people, some people have heard about this but a lot of people haven't. So I'm curious to hear about it. Yeah, it's kind of cool because it's from a really straight and narrow side of like the world. And so I don't think it's been very talked about in this part of the world um, because it's mm. a very like sciencey thing. Like the only people who can get certified in it are like licensed therapists or speech pathologists or occupational therapists. Um, so mm. it's like a pretty... Um, I don't know, like standard Western kind of a, a modality, but it has yeah. this magical, like creates this bridge for me between the like trauma world and the manifesting world. Because mm. the trauma world, you have all these people who are like, yeah, I've got all of the aces, like I'm doing EMDR and like shadow work 24 seven and I'm still miserable and I don't know how to help myself. Right. And yeah. then you've got the manifesting world that's all like um, what you can um, picture in your head, you can hold in your hand, you know, and it's like <laughs> there's no real like connectivity between those two groups of people. And I feel like there could yes. be because both of them are true. Like, yeah, trauma is real and it can be really hard to be a human if you've had a lot of trauma and it can just be hard to be a human on this planet. But at the same yeah. time, like reality creation is real. And when you are in like a chronic fight, flight, freeze, you're really going to just manifest challenges and obstacles. Totally. Totally. And so totally. if you spend all day doing affirmations and your nervous system is like, but I think we're going to die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, the universe speaks energy. It doesn't speak English. Right. And so for those of us that were not gifted with this like amassing situation where we're just like believe that we're worthwhile and we deserve to be on the planet, like we need yeah. help to be able to access the reality creation stuff. Yeah, I, I love that part of it, too, because this is... I've done this show long enough that people can see the arcs in my life when I'm like super flowy manifesting and then I'm clearly in some like trauma response yeah. at various points because it's been like nine years and it's been like at least two or three cycles of that. And I and I think so this applies for like almost all people. And, and what I've found is even the, the really great manifestors who maybe grew up with very little trauma or haven't experienced, you know, whatever trauma they could say someone else experienced so they have a problem with manifesting mm -hmm. most people will go through periods in their life 
where there is an ebb. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't met a human being um, really of a certain age. Let's just say like I just turned 40. You increasingly find less people who haven't had traumatic yeah. experience. It's like they're there. They it happens. Life is hard. Yeah. Life, life is going to throw you challenges. I personally think that they're functional and it's not yeah. like a bad thing, but it's hard to remember that if totally. you do go into this fight or flight response thing, which I know I go through and it's just like you're saying, it's not English. Yeah. You're, it's a, that's why I always say the feeling is the thing. Yeah. You, It doesn't understand the English, the words you're trying nope. to communicate with your affirmations or anything else. It's how you feel and genuinely feel. And if you find that you can't easily shift into that feeling, it's okay to get some help. Totally. It's like not the worst thing in the world. And the fact that there this does come from the clinical world is particularly interesting. Um, I was literally just reading um, – the uh, a research study the one in okayama yeah. about this and it was really it was really fascinating it's, granted it's not a lot of people mm -hmm. but it was clinically like up to snuff it really yeah. was and it was really helping people anyway i digress please continue yeah so you know my in to it was that i'm trained as a speech pathologist so i was you know 15 years working in public schools uh, with kids, mm. all kinds of neurodiverse kids. And I was like trained by the US government in autism, like one of the first waves of speech pathologists to be trained specifically for this like growing population, whatever. So I got the really one sided pathologizing uh, perspective on neurodiversity. And all through those years, I was like, this is not it. Like, these people are not they're not they don't have a pathology like they are yeah. demonstrating um that they are like the concept of pendulums right or if you want to call them rules they're just individuals who do not have the capacity to be like sucked into the pendulums in the same way that other folks do which is actually a huge gift right those of us who are not neurodiverse, I don't include myself in that. I'm very neurodiverse. But people yeah, yeah. who are not as neurodiverse are like, all right, give me a pendulum. Give me a rule. Give me an authority. I'll do what you say. And I'll like win because I can follow those rules. And then yeah. there's this whole crop of humans and more and more who are like, yeah, that doesn't make sense. And I'm not going to do it. And I think that my opinion yeah. is actually more valid than this external authority. Um, so it's like a superpower, but it at the same time makes living in society very challenging, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so it comes with like all these sensitivities to sound and to light and to textures and to clothing um, and to uh, having to schedule or focus. You know, it's the whole like cross of planning over to whatever it's sleeping Phoenix. It's like those mm. of us who were born in the cross of planning time when we and we did not have the skill set to be able to follow all these pendulums. Like we got yeah. told that something was really wrong with us. And um, it's yeah. isolating when you try to actually like respect your nervous system and not force yourself to be out in this overstimulating world. Um, so yeah. anyways, I was experiencing all of that. I'm a person who had three brain injuries before I was three years old and so have been like so mm. neurodiverse my whole existence. Um, so I experienced that on a personal level. And then I was like being told to put these kids into boxes and make them follow the rules. And right. I was like, this is jacked up. Like there's something really <laughs> wrong with this. You know, I was like crushing my own yeah. soul as I was crushing children's souls, which I never really did. I it's, was like, had my yeah, secret sure. like bat cave in the school where like everyone could come and be themselves. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you couldn't like actually yeah. do it, but you're in the system yeah. that is doing that. Yeah. So it's got to be it's its own type. So of I was like yeah. in arguments and like getting repercussions from authorities like all of the time. So it just was progressively yeah. not working and getting really hard for my soul. And so I was desperately looking for stuff to help myself and also to get me out of the public school system. And yeah. my doctor recommended like a free workshop 
on polyvagal theory, which is what the safe and sound mm-hmm. protocol is based off of. Um, and it's bas- basically like um, it takes the mainstream perspective on nervous st- system, which is just like you're either in fight, flight, or you're in rest and digest. And it, <laughs> as if, yeah, right? So <laughs> neat and tidy. Um, and then it just like expands it to um, all the different complexities and it brings this really cool perspective on um, behavior because it basically says like behavior is just an indication of nervous system state. So Mm. all nervous system states are morally neutral because they, it's just um, a program that's running. It's just a, you know, a technology in our bodies and you can't be in the wrong nervous system state Um, And therefore, if your behavior is based off of it, like your behavior is morally neutral as well, which that was like a huge breakthrough for me because I was like, yes, okay. Like all of these kids who are running out of buildings and, you know, stripping off their clothes and rocking and stimming, like they're just doing what their nervous system is asking them to do. And we do not need to extinguish these behaviors, as they say, in those systems. We need to, like, right. listen to these behaviors as communication and figure out what it means and how to, like, support this human. So it's just rad because it takes all the blame and, like, right wrong out of uh, behavior. yes. And yes. gives us tools yeah. to like figure out how to support our nervous system so that we can more often make choices, um, knowing that we're always going to react sometimes. And when we do react, we can like experience those reactions with grace instead of shame. Yes. Well, I like the moral neutrality mm-hmm. of it because I genuinely believe like the moments I have felt like most at peace or at one with like my being, there is this kind of unconditional love, yeah. non-judgment energy that feels like the root of everything that we experience. Just my perception. Me too. That is not going. To, yeah, right. I mean, it's kind of a thing. But basically, that is not going to support a system that is based on right and wrong. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There is. It doesn't make sense. And it's one of the reasons that I think I have a lot of trouble with the systems that exist around psychiatric health yeah. and psychology, like all the things, because it's like, it assumes there is a right way to be. And mm-hmm. like, of course we don't want people like screaming and not being able to like interact with anyone around them and clearly suffering. Like we're mm-hmm. not saying there should be no, so no formal diagnosis in some way, mm-hmm. but trying to say like we need to correct that because this is wrong behavior rather than examining like that's a symptom of something that else that's going on and then once you identify what else may be going on well then maybe you can actually try to deal with that in a constructive way and it's just like that that's actually evolving us as a species right because we're clearly dealing with especially when it comes like the study I was referencing earlier was based on autism, Mm -hmm. right? And it was, it's clear there's something going on with a lot of people in the world related to autism spectrum. Like it it is, it is very, very obvious. My, my previous guest, um, Tao Lin, a great author Mm -hmm. was like, you know, I'm autistic. Like I didn't even realize it until I published these works and everyone was calling me autistic. Like Mm. this is insane. I I then had to self-reflect on it. Mm -hmm. And it's my sister is very much like, like clearly in this world. I kind of like missed all of this stuff Mm -hmm. but then when i read and find out more about it i'm like holy shit like Mm -hmm. i think these are things that i may have symptoms of not that i would consider myself autistic per se but like i got sensory overload today i was reading books at uh my my four-year-old's daycare kind of program Mm -hmm. and i was reading like one of the chapters in frog and toad but there was like three other conversations going on between adults yeah in the daycare yeah and I was I was doing it, but I was like so like my my levels of stress right. and cortisol, right. like I could feel them rising. I'm reading books to kids, so I can't be like shut the fuck up, but like I could feel myself getting stressed out. And I'm like, you know, I never really noticed this before 
Um, and it is something I personally think that I've used cannabis for yeah. for most of my adult life because it does kind of yep. – it leaves me a lot. It gives me a vehicle for processing it. But yeah, I, I, tell tell me more about like the polyvagal system um, and just like what that's kind of based on. Because we mentioned fight or flight or like resting, digesting. Mm-hmm. And like we clearly know there are other states of consciousness that exist in between those. Yeah. So what 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 about the polyvagal um, theory? Can you share with? Yeah, us? I, I, let's do it. Um, so right before we jump into that, I just want to touch back on when you were talking about diagnoses like in my experience of studying the polyvagal theory polyvagal can identify anything in the dsm as pretty much dsm Mm -hmm. being that diagnostic manual where all these diagnoses are listed and described like yeah all of those are nervous system responses like pretty Mm -hmm. much end of story this is not you know Stephen Porges, who came up with the polyvagal theory, doesn't say this, but my interpretation is that any behavioral pattern is like can be traced back just to a nervous system response Um, because you start to read those characteristics and you just see them as like different iterations of how the vagus nerve is trying to keep you in like biological survival, which is why I love this Mm. so much because it takes all of the stigma, all of the blame, all of the like... Um, you're stuck in this diagnosis out of the picture. Yes. And it says you can learn skills to support yourself. You may always have these characteristics, but you can support yourself within those characteristics. And that is so liberating to me um, as a person who has received almost every diagnosis over the years. And then I finally feel like I'm just like, I just am a person who is expressing that life is really weird. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i you know i've collected a few diagnoses on my on my journey as well yeah. and it's true it's like sometimes you're just not processing things like people around you and sometimes you do get the benefit of connecting with people who do process yeah. things like and you realize oh it's not just me yeah. that's kind of nice yeah. that's always a, a big uh revelatory prop part of the process yeah. but yeah i For mean sure. i love that it can actually like when you can take the judgment of yourself away yes for like why you are the way you are, that's a powerful moment. And I like that this really addresses this, but you're also clearly, you know, as you're alluding to, you're, you come, came from kind of like a diagnostic clinical through the government and public school system, but you're clearly woo. Totally. You alluded to like 55th Gene Keys. Like we, I mean, Jessa connected me. I mean, I don't know anyone who's not woo who she connects me with ever. So, I mean, how, how do you integrate and synthesize them? I see the path, but I want to hear from like your perspective, how it's kind of like fit in. Yeah. I love how actually it is seamless. It is because yeah. Polyvagal doesn't like it's completely just um, biological science, but it it doesn't have anything that contradicts with um, a non-physical or paranormal lens. Um, so mm. it's it's a very um, lovely uh, fit, I think, personally, as yes, an entirely woo person like I have a regular <laughs> ET who's like my my partner on another planet where I am with them. And like, I'm here as a part of genetic mutation experiment, like all that I can go into all that. Right? I love it. I love but, um, it. I love it. Yeah. So I'm like very both sides of the fence. And I think that's like part of maybe why I'm here on this planet in this version of me, because like I identify as non-binary i'm queer trans like queer spirituality queer like polyvagal like i'm queer anything that it is yeah. because i just am like yeah none no, none of the duality makes sense so totally polyvagal is based off of this nerve that we have called the vagus nerve the vagus nerve runs from our brainstem down um both sides of the under the ears, if we were on video, I could show you, it comes around from the back of your brainstem, down under both sides of the ears, down both sides of the throat, innervates in with the auditory canal. So hearing is how we're accessing Mm. it with the SSP, which is a listening program. It comes down, it innervates with the um, throat, which is why vocalization is used as a vagus nerve um, stimulator, uh, toner through all ancient cultures, through like chanting, singing, breath work, you know, all of that comes down 
both sides of throat branches out to the lungs connects in with the heart because it modulates um breath rate and heart rate it comes down and connects in with all of the internal organs including the reproductive organs and then it wraps all in and around the intestines and ends at the bottom of the small intestine so it is also referred to as the autonomic nervous system meaning that all of the automatic functions which are Another word for that is autonomic. All of those functions that keep you alive day to day in a physiological sense are happening when the vagus nerve has determined that it's safe enough for them to happen. And Mm. where polyvagal comes in is it helps us to understand that in um, its design, it was made so that we would be able to navigate threats in um, real time process those threats through using nervous system exercises and then move on with our day, then get a good night's rest and do all of our like repair of all of these physiological functions and then start again the next day. That's how Mm. animals use the vagus nerve, right? Yeah. But because of especially post-agricultural society, you know, industrial revolution kind of time period. Yep. Um, so when we switched to the rhythm of production rather than the rhythm of nature, we mm-hmm. started getting out of sync with our nervous system because the vagus nerve in a, in a system that responds to nature, you can see a threat, okay, an animal comes to get you, uh, an earthquake happens, a volcano erupts, okay, you're going to naturally be able to reach for some of these um, exercises that are programmed to process through the chemicals that rise up in your body to support you in the fight, flight, or freeze. So when you see the threat, your um, system, your vagus nerve is going to send out those chemicals and say, okay, um, given all of this information, we are going to suggest that you run. Okay. So we're going to give you adrenaline and cortisol. We're going to shorten your breath rate. We're going to give you diarrhea and make you pee right away. So you can get lightened up so you can be faster. We're going to increase your heart rate and you're going to move, 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 move really fast and you're going to process through these chemicals um, through the movement and then the sweating and the water is going to facilitate the um, the release of the cortisol and the adrenaline okay mm. so it's like a perfect recipe for keeping yourself alive and processing out all the pretty toxic chemicals that it took to trigger this reaction to make you stronger and faster than you usually would be okay right right now take that same process and put it into our present day society where we're responding to production rather to than to nature. And I get an email from my boss that says your report is wrong and you made an error in it. And I all of a sudden am scared again. My nervous system just goes, oh, we might die because for me, losing my job might mean that I can't provide for my kid, right. which then w- right. might mean that I'm a terrible person and we're going to end up homeless and whatever. So right. my nervous system is like, oh, we might die. Okay. And it releases the same chemicals because it's like, yeah, you should run away from that. Right. So it mm. releases the same chemicals. Yeah. And then I sit there. And I respond to the um, email and I drink another cup of coffee <laughs> right. and I um, and I say mean things to the um, to the boss or I say mean things to myself. Yeah. And I just don't process out any of these chemicals. And so now I'm having a buildup and now my vagus nerve is like, oh, you're not going to support us. You're not going to do the process. All right. I don't know what that means, but maybe that means after 10, 15, 25 years of this, you know, like using your example from this morning, you sat there and you said, I couldn't yell at them because I'm in a preschool room. 
But actually, yeah. what you didn't realize was that you do have the right to pause the book and say, hey, friends, I'm going to complete the book in one moment and walk over to the adults and saying, hey, I have a hard time concentrating when I have other conversations going on around me. Would you all mind pausing your conversation or taking it elsewhere so that I could finish this story with the kids? And if not, no worries. Is there someone else who might be able to continue the story? Because I'm not able to. And if you had been able to do that, your nervous system would have been like, thank you. I respect you and I appreciate you. Right. Because we have (laughs) practiced like denying our nervous system over and over and over again we've been trained into that right do you have to go to the bathroom hold it are you hungry it's not lunchtime do you want to go to sleep you're it's not you know you stay up do you like not want to take a nap too bad you have to right like we've been trained to deny this system and so what happens over time is we get what's called a neuroceptive mismatch meaning we're no longer able to accurately interpret the threat or the safety. We are either under Mm. defensive or over defensive. Most of us are a mix of under and over defensive. So under defensive looks like I sit there and read the book, even though my brain is going, I cannot, I cannot, I'm freaking out, right? Under defensive means I drink caffeine, even though it makes me feel sick. Under defensive means Mm -hmm. I stay in a relationship, even though the person keeps telling me that I'm a loser, right? Right. Over defensive means I'm hyper aware of everything all of the time. And I have a huge startle response. And I think every time I like open my phone that somebody hates me and doesn't love me anymore, right? So most of us are bouncing between those two. And in polyvagal, those two like, those two response areas are uh, sympathetic, which is like a mobilized or like a gas pedal fight flight. And then dorsal, which is the freeze or the fawn um, shut down Mm. brake pedal. And then polyvagal introduces this third thing, which is called ventral. And it's like newer on the block, evolutionarily speaking, it's only 200 million years old, whereas dorsal and sympathetic are four and 500 million years old. And so most of us haven't integrated ventral. Ventral allows us to use sympathetic and dorsal like very effectively. It also allows us to connect with other mammals. So it does all the like problem solving, cooperation, perspective taking, compassion, empathy. It does all that um, in this beautiful way. And it makes it so you don't have to just be on this endless cycle between fight, flight, or freeze, fawn. Um, And it is something that can be learned and practiced. So... (laughs) That's pretty good. That's the last part I think is crucial there. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's like if it can be learned and practiced, that's that's the kind of stuff that I like because otherwise it's just like, well, it's great that it's there. I just do any other mammals have that third ventral system or is it just humans? Yeah. I mean, I I feel like I want to double check that information, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a mammal thing because the co-regulation has to do with any of the species that are um, actually like, uh, so it's differentiation between reptiles and mammals. So if you think about like primates, they can um, like coordinate on food gathering and like home building and like, um, like even, you know, like lions, um coordinate with each other to like protect each other or like adopt each other's babies if they need to those kind of things so that's co-regulation right and like reptiles it's like you're born and it's like peace out like bye you know it's like we're not a team this is no we're on our own now we're not hanging out yeah we're just gonna be cold-blooded yeah <laughs> thing. yeah sorry and like yeah yeah, yeah you know no, it's no it. <laughs> shade to the reptiles because they just don't have that part of their like nervous yeah. system developed and like what that's the piece where we can really look at ourselves and say like if i've been a person who's like totally treated people like shit or totally treated myself like shit i can i can recognize that like it's not because i was being an asshole 
it's because I was operating yeah. in my dorsal or sympathetic where I have only the skills of an alligator. Yeah. Yeah, this the flight or fight response thing and nervous system like dysregulation has been making a lot of sense to me, um, especially over the past few years. And I don't think it's unique. I think, you know, things like the pandemic, which like massively mm -hmm. altered social interaction and mm -hmm. the rise of, you know, clearly at times, if not often intrusive, you know, technology mm -hmm. and devices that we're ill prepared to cope with. Mm -hmm. I do feel like a lot of us get stuck mm -hmm. in these um, states mm -hmm. and then we will look for some type of numbing agent yes. as well right yes. whether that's our phone mm -hmm. scrolling whether it's a substance yes. whether it's you know gambling or a relationship I mean it can be many things and they don't all have to be bad someone could pour their you know uh, energy into exercise but even that can become unhealthy yeah. at times so it's like their food all of yes. these things exist out there so I think this is is very helpful or potentially helpful for a lot of people because even the strongest of us at yeah. times like this this world is so uncertain and kind of like uh we're we're breaking apart and transitioning in such a rapid manner that even for the most woo of us, yeah. it's kind of like holy shit, yeah. like we are really free falling here. So I, I mean, well, I and think this, this is the piece that's stuff. so important I, is that many people come to this work thinking like, oh, you're gonna turn me into Buddha and I'm just gonna be like peaceful and one with everything, <laughs> and I'm just gonna like yeah. accept all things as for me. And that is not the point <laughs> of this work, like. The point of this work yeah. is to say, like, you're a physical being on a planet with high levels of threat. And if you want to mm -hmm. have this spiritual experience that you're looking for, you have to support yourself on a physical level. And even if you yeah. somehow got to create this magical reality where you no longer had any interpersonal conflict, any weather, any, <laughs> like... Yeah. Yeah. car accidents or health related things like if you somehow could escape all of that then fine you don't need this but i'm not aware that anyone with any amount of money or any amount of manifestation skills is able to escape the physical reality right now and no. so all of us who are in human bodies deserve access to this information and you don't have to have the ssp to have access to this information like this, all you right. need to know is that you have a nervous system and that there are functions of the nervous system and there are four ways to support the nervous system. That's all you need to know and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. And so like I want to talk about also the SSP just like technically too because mm -hmm. this really piqued my interest. Like I went to a music school. I've been an audio engineer and oh. producer for a long time. And so like I actually understand what they're talking about in terms of like uh, – you know, limiting the frequency to the human speech, speech sound. frequencies mm -hmm. and also the modulation mm -hmm. from 50. Was it, was it 50 to 3,000 hertz or something like that? Mm -hmm. Like I actually understand what this stuff means oh. and I could see just technically how that could be useful, right? Yeah. The analogy that's used is it's kind of like a mother's lullaby, yeah. Yeah. which, you know, I have, uh, I've been around my own young children now going on I guess the two year old's about to be three, so they're mm. they're not super young. But like for seven years now, mm. I've been around my own young children, and you do see what actually calms them mm. down and helps regulate them, just intuitively from like a maternal mm. and a paternal sense. Like you can kind of get into it. So, I I'm very curious. Like you've you've you're a practitioner of this. You, uh, how have you found that the actual kind of limiting of the frequencies, like what have you noticed when yeah. people are listening? What is the feedback from people we've worked with? Yeah, it's so fascinating and rad to watch because I experienced it myself. You know, I went through yes. it twice and I could feel it in my body. But when you hear other people reflecting on it and you see the change in them week to week, it's just amazing um so yeah. i usually end up with people like at least 15 to you know sometimes 30 40 sessions going through the five hour playlist because um we go yeah. through according to the person's nervous system response and i see people come in you know they're they've got complaints about just feeling like they're in you know constant disassociation numbing like you were talking about earlier 
or they're in yeah. constant anxiety, panic, you know, freaking out all the time. Um, and without fail, like uh, as we get into hour three, people start to be like, I don't know, like, I feel like I'm like noticing <laughs> what's going on and like I'm remembering things more and like hmm. I can tell when I'm hungry or when I'm thirsty and like I uh, haven't gone to my break room like I've eaten lunch in a closet for five years and like I just went into the break room the other day and like started talking to someone <laughs> and it's like right, right, what's right. happening is they're experiencing the present moment. Yeah. And most of us yeah. have never done that. Yeah. I, I, I realized, I mean, I had done it unintentionally mm -hmm. in the past, but I realized there was, I think it was like a year or so ago, something like that. I did a whole episode on it because how profound it was for me. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't think I've really, I think I've been avoiding the present yeah. moment as actively yeah. as possible, yeah. unintentionally, yeah. but I've been doing it for a really long time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is kind of a gateway yeah. towards that more kind of mystical or flowy part. Because that's, those are the moments that I'm, yeah. I, I notice, like when I am present, fully present, there's a degree of fearlessness. Yeah. There's a degree of like love yeah. and just like it's there. But sometimes it's hard to find yourself into that state. But if you're un thoroughly unfamiliar yeah. what it's like, it's even harder. So well, and yeah, if that's you amazing. have that's really cool. Uh, if you're in a chronic defense state, you can't be in the present moment because your your functions of your senses are being overridden by the nervous system to hyper attune to the perceived threat. So right, that's sort of a jumble right. of words. But basically, like, if I'm in a, if I think there's a threat, then my vision is going to be narrowed. So I can't take in my environment. My hearing, the yeah. bandwidth that I'm paying attention to is also going to be narrowed. So I'm going to tune out speech sound and I'm going to hyper attune to low frequencies, which are evolutionarily related to threats. So the pounding of hooves or thunder or earthquake yeah. or a growl, right? So um, my um, touch is going to be um, like affected by increased like sweat and temperature dysregulation. I'm going to not be able to taste or smell my food in the same way because my digestive system is going to shut down because that's not a priority when you're in a threat response. Um, so all of my senses, which are how we connect with the present moment, are going to be altered by this, right. um, this nervous right. system threat response. So if somebody looks at me, like they say, if you smile and look a dog in the eye, they're going to think that you're baring your teeth because you're trying to show them that you're going to rip their throat out. Right. Right. So when right. I'm out in the world in a threat response, I'm going to see people as baring their teeth. I'm going to hear people's tone differently. I'm going to interpret it as irritated or angry. This is why so many of us feel like we've been in such a mind fuck for our whole childhoods and early lives yeah. because we're like, I'm pretty yeah. sure everybody told me I was a piece <laughs> of shit every day. Like, that's all that I heard. <laughs> what? And it's like, yeah, I mean, it was also like you have the luxury now, I'm sure, too, of being a parent. I just feel like the generational gaps in terms of parenting, um, especially for like boomers and the older generations, like some of them were really also just telling the kids yes. that you're a piece of shit. So that, I was like, there is yeah, that. <laughs> that perpetuated us to like be in this threat response. And that's all we could hear for the rest totally. of our life. Right. Because I don't know about you. Like if someone's like, Oh, you're a nice person. I'm like, oh, you think I suck? Like, I I <laughs> I knew it, you know. And like, I literally have a book where I write down like a journal where I write down when people say nice yeah. stuff to me because it takes me like a month to process it. Like, I have to read it yeah. and be like, are we sure? Like, I think I I don't know. Maybe you should double check. Like, because yeah. you know. <laughs> but but yeah, it's, yeah, it's 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 so the the present moment thing connects us with mysticism in like the reverse way that people think you know a lot of people get to the mystical yeah. stuff through drugs or long meditation but what did the buddhists always say like chop wood carry like before enlightenment chop wood carry water 
after enlightenment, chop wood, carry water, because the day to day is where the present moment is in those mundane, like sensory pathway experiences. And then you like get to experience mystical in the day to day once you're really open to the day to day. So it's, it's, it's the practical actually is the mystical, which is why I love this. (laughs) Well, it's very interesting, too, because defining kind of like it has been my experience that the gateway to the mystical is the present moment. Mm -hmm. It is like the ultimate hack. But finding a way into the present moment is, I think, something that a lot of people struggle with, because like what you're saying is like people are are in flight or fight it could just be like a pure base like like you said with the money stuff right like people oh well if i don't make this amount of money or i affect my money this way then my family is going to go broke and we're going to be homeless and i'm going to be a shitty person and like everyone probably thinks that like they're the only one thinking like that (laughs) Most people are thinking like that. That's what's insane. Even people with way more money than you would think would need to be thinking about that are thinking about that sometimes, especially. Um, And one thing that like really strikes me when you're talking about this, the polyvagal system too, is that like, I think of like when animals go through like, like, let's say they were just like hunted Mm -hmm. by like a a, a predator, Mm -hmm. like a lion or something, and they get away and they were fine. And you know, nothing actually happened. They do this thing where they kind of like shake. shudder mm-hmm. it out. Yeah, they shake yeah. it out. Like that's them processing what just happened. Yeah. If you think of all the times that you like get into like maybe you weren't hunted, but maybe the psychological or social equivalent happened where you perceive some threat. That's right. You usually don't shake it that's off. Right. So where do you think that's getting stored? That's right. You know, ultimately it doesn't just dissipate into nothingness. Chronic it's, uh, pain, chronic yeah, illness. Cancer. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So yeah, the autoimmune stuff. Yep. Let's really point out that the the like coming back to how do we access this? How do we access ventral? Is we have to support that animal system in animal ways. So we've got mm. to pay attention to the present moment, which is called mindfulness. Right. That's the fancy word for just paying attention to what you're experiencing when you're experiencing it and movement those are the two things that you watch any dog or cat or squirrel or lizard and you're going to notice that they're paying attention to the present moment what they're experiencing when they're experiencing it and they're moving every day so the simplest way that we can access this is to give ourselves half an hour of movement a day and half an hour of paying attention to the present moment and this is where it's so cool because This can be accessed by the most scientific materialist person and the most woo person. It works equally well for both. You know, anyone can take five minutes while they're doing the dishes and be like, oh, what does the water feel like on my hands? What does the soap smell like? What do I think of this plate? You know, like, isn't it nice that I had food? Like, that can be done. It doesn't have to be meditation. It doesn't have to be Buddhism, you know. And then movement doesn't have to be exercise. It's actually better if it's not exercise (laughs) because we all have lots of shit about exercise, you know? So movement could be um, walking around your street and um, noticing five different colors or noticing, you know, go and find three different green plants and touch them and take a deep breath when you touch each one. Or put on one song and wiggle your body around until the song is done in whatever way. You don't have to dance because a lot of people are like, I don't know how to dance. You know, wiggle your body (laughs) around. (laughs) It can be I'm sitting (laughs) in a chair and I'm going to twist my body one way and then I'm going to twist my body the other way. And I'm going to take one deep breath. You know, it does not need to be complicated and it doesn't need to be for a long time. But over time, this will be like taking a multivitamin for your nervous system yeah. and you'll build up a resource or like a reservoir of resiliency so that the next time yeah. you get that email from your boss, you're like, okay, well, I can handle it, you know? Or even if you're in a very stressful situation, like it was so cool. Um, the other day at my kid's soccer game, my kid got really hurt by a the other team who was being like scary aggressive, right? The tension was so high. The parents were freaking out. The coaches were freaking out. Like they ended up 
having to forfeit the game because it was so scary. Oh my God. Yeah, it was so intense. So my nervous system was in super duper um, flight fight, right? So I start running down towards the field. Now I've got the uh, complication of co-parenting with an ex, right? Who yes. manages. I also had that complication. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And it, we have different perspectives on many things. So she started telling me her perspective, which included, don't go down there. Don't say anything. Calm down. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. was able yeah. to in like, I was just like so proud of my nervous system. I turned around and I said, don't tell me what to do. I am processing really high emotions right now because I'm very scared because my child got hurt. And I said it just yeah. like that. And it was like, I didn't say you're a bad person. I didn't say, you know, go to hell. I just was able to say I'm having a flight fight response. And part of it is yeah. moving my body and asserting myself through a sort of communication. <laughs> and yeah, it was no, phenomenal. Because it was like, I, I'm i not looking to just sit there and be like, nothing's real. Like my child is not real and my child is yeah, this yeah, environment and everything is perfect and namaste. You know, like I'm not trying yeah, to be that. Totally. Um, but I, I was able to be like, I'm upset because this is scary. And I was honest and I was clear and I was assertive and I set a boundary, you know, and it's like that's – that's what this gives you the capability to do, not to just like be like, oh, like this is a video game and it doesn't really matter, you know, because that's some bullshit. No, no. It's, well, it's it, it. People will find that like viewing every single situation through that lens in real time is not really going to be practical. Yeah. For most things <laughs> like you can do it to a point, but especially when it involves like kids yeah. or like, you know, it's just like it, it is very, very, very like you're allowed to react to a situation like that. That's just like a very scary thing. I'm thinking of how I would react yeah. in that situation. It probably wouldn't have been as cool and calm and collected. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's important to be able to kind of like express what you need to express yeah. and not have to shove it down. I think yeah. there's a freedom to that. And we really don't have a lot of frameworks for that right now. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's affecting people, it seems at large. I know a lot of people have difficulty kind of like navigating all aspects of life gracefully mm -hmm. and i do think if you can you know you're it doesn't mean again you're going to only experience positive things what's right. really interesting to me about this too is like i would almost say that like being able to be present in the sense that you're mentioning or mm -hmm. speaking about is like a prerequisite for actually like manifestation too i agree like that is from that is the place where you actually are getting to kind of like incept yourself or whatever or make it yeah, like a video game. Let's call it but intentional manifestation because we're all manifesting. Yeah, intentional. All of the time. We are all manifesting all the time. But let's say you're feeling, let's say like you have, you're, you're, a lot of people are like this. My, I've been like this plenty of times, right? And I'm sure, I, unfortunately, probably won't be the end of it. Mm -hmm. But you know how this stuff works. You know that you're manifesting all the time, but then you notice you're also feeling like shit or you're demotivated or your nervous system is just totally out of whack, uh -huh. right? And you're just in perma flight or fight. That's almost more debilitating, yeah. right? It's like, I know I'm doing this to myself. Why am I creating this reality? So that's when you actually like have to find whatever modality, whatever tool is going to potentially give you a path to presence. And then we usually just kind of you know, find that it's a combination of things too. Like this is, yeah. that's maybe what the path is actually about is figuring out the ways that work effectively to find that moment over and over again, which is what all mystics throughout yeah. all time have basically been saying. Yeah. So it's not like a massive surprise, but still you, you need to be kind of doled out the path for yourself because it is like, it is, it's, we're facing such novel times as human beings right now that it's like it's hard to fully appreciate because we're like in it. Yeah. But like society has moved just so incredibly fast since what the time you were mentioning, the Industrial Revolution, right? Yeah. It's just been like 
it's it's we 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 it's hard to comprehend just kind of how parabolic things have gotten and so anything that can help kind of regulate us is i i'm all for yeah and just making you feel like you have choice because like you said for those people who really want to be doing the intentional manifesting and they can feel like really ashamed like I'm doing it wrong or I, I yes. can't like I can't get myself to do it. And they are so external reality focused that exactly that it can feel very debilitating. And when we realize that it's all about the internal reality, then you get to connect in with the maturity to be able to accept all external circumstances and surrender the need to control the external yes. circumstances. And then all yes. of a sudden manifestation is not done from this like forcing, grabbing, needing desperation. Yes. It's done from this like all of it is something that I trust that I can move through because it's not just like me and the external circumstances. There's like a whole program running here. And like, I can yeah. trust that when something that quote unquote bad happens, that it's still something that can support me and that I can learn from and that I can find contentment. And then the ironic yeah. thing is that the more yes. you are content and no require external like good things good <laughs> things fucking happen right <laughs> it's one of the most annoying yeah. aspects of how reality seems to function yeah. but yes that is what happens <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's just like that is the paradox of this you can't force or willpower or think yourself into it because it is at the end of the day like really related to how we're feeling yeah. and so it sounds like to me that SSP is kind of a way to modulate our ability to process yeah. stimuli and energy, which will have a positive influence if, you know, uh, practice on being able to do it consciously and with intention. Yeah. And that's a really powerful thing because if you just can't even get to the point where that's even halfway felt, right. let alone believed or known, good luck. This is all just going to sound like gibberish. Well, that's exactly right. right. It's going to be like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I want to tell people yeah. is like, that's why you went to therapy for 20 years and didn't make any progress is because yes. you literally can't, with the tools of an alligator, you cannot do shadow work. Okay. You can't like come to radical acceptance when you're in your defense state. There's just, you literally are blocked by something called the amygdala. The amygdala like shuts access to the frontal lobe where executive functioning and like problem solving and compassion, empathy, and multiple perspectives, all of that takes place in the frontal lobe. And the amygdala cuts you off yeah. from there for your survival when you're in your low brain doing fight, flight, freeze, fawn. It makes you go directly to the motor cortex Whereas when you're feeling safe, you get information from your senses, it goes into your low brain or your hind brain, some people call it, and the yeah. nervous system decides if there's a threat. It says, okay, no threat. It sends you to your frontal lobe and your frontal lobe's like, let's make a great decision here. And then you go to your motor cortex yeah. and do your great decision. When you're blocked by the amygdala, there's nothing that you can do other than support your nervous system with like the shaking that the little animal does to come back yeah. and process it out and come back to that safety. So there's like four ways to do that for your amygdala and they're all embedded in every wisdom tradition and like indigenous tradition. It's just br breathing, movement, vocalization, and mindfulness. That's it. Yeah. And so yeah. the SSP yeah. is like a really fancy, cool tool that, can help you get there passively when you have a lot of blocks up um, because you don't have to do the SSP like the SSP does you. It just goes in passively. Um, so it can give people yeah. a really cool jump start. But I want everybody to know that 
you can access this without the SSP. It takes more commitment and diligent and is easier done with like a coach or someone who's like really going to help you get on track with that. Yeah. Um, but you can yeah. you can do it without the SSP. And even if you do it with the SSP, the SSP is just a jump start. It's like going to a 30 day boot camp or something like, yeah, are you going to be in more shape after it? Sure. But if you don't continue it for the rest of your life, like it's not going to matter. So the SSP is right. how to start like a lifestyle of taking care right. of your nervous right. system. Like, right. It can jumpstart you into behaviors yeah. that you can choose to continue with or not. Yeah, no, I, I really like that. I mean, what I was thinking of too is I was like, I got to get in and start filtering out some music because I, I as I understand it, the SSP basically like it's playlists, right? Yeah. It's like songs that are played for it would be super cool if people could kind of like pre-select their playlist yeah. that met certain criteria for it and then run it through like an SSP filter. Oh, that's a great which idea. I, I'm not I, – I just think that it's like probably not as crazy hard as it sounds no. because like if you understand audio stuff, it's like – it's kind of cool to be able to allow that and just like for certain people, especially trying to evoke certain states yeah. because – you know, there's a lot of social situations and I do think music has such a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And for people who don't know what like something limited to like the vocal spectrum, mm -hmm. it's not crazy. It's not right. like you're hearing some wildly augmented. No, it just thing. sounds like there's regular be some music. High... Yeah, but it is cutting off these especially higher frequencies, mm -hmm. which are usually present and, you know, a certain level of the lower ones to 50 hertz. It's pretty cool. I, I, I'm really like it's piquing my interest in in a way that something hasn't in a long time. So like, cool. if I can't believe we've already spoken for like an hour. I wanted to like, uh, OK, let me ask this question and then I want to talk a little bit about 50 with Gene Keys okay. um, here, too, just because like I want to understand that better. But let's say people are interested in SSP. I know you're a practitioner. Like mm -hmm. what's the easiest way for people to learn, experience, book? Like how do they do that? To learn about what the SSP is? Yeah, and or to potentially do it as well. Oh, with like, me. Yeah, yeah, they're like, yeah, with you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can connect with me on my website, which is um, anexperiencer.com, anexperiencer.com. Um, and you can just book a call with me and we can see if it's a good fit. The SSP is not a good fit for everyone. There's certain things in your medical history that might make it um, not a supportive option. And if that's the case, then we can talk through. Um, and I because of that, I do want to mention that um, I love that you're interested in figuring out the filtration and all that. But um, the reason <laughs> why it is like a certified provider that gives it, that does it with you is because um, it is a powerful physiological intervention. And we don't want to just yeah. put this filtered music on in a room full of people who are like, have all their personal trauma that's going to get kicked up like my job mm. as a provider is that I've been trained to watch the physiological responses so that I don't send somebody into a catatonic state or into a full panic attack because that is what the SSB totally. has the potential to do um, the only time in all of their research that someone has gone into a psychosis as a result of listening is when they were doing it alone so mm. having someone who is a trained provider with you monitoring your physiological response is like really important. Um, it well, we'll develop the SSP yes. filter for practitioners there you only. Go. There you that, go. That'll or, be a proprietary thing for them. You know, we can be like you can you could create your own version of SSP and then train providers in that, you know, and maybe there is a way exactly. to make it more accessible. Yeah. And I love that idea. But like, I've actually had quite a few like music engineer people who I think are connected to Jessa, like maybe through Mark or what have you, who are like, yeah, I yeah, could yeah. do this. Like, why is it so expensive? I'll just do it for myself and listen to it. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a little. Yeah, no, it's a it's a real thing. Yeah. And like also, as you mentioned before, you're you're walking people, walking people through this experience yeah. and having them note like responses that you can as someone who's gone through this process yeah. and like experienced it with other people. Yeah. Um, you know what to kind of look for. It's the same reason that people sign up for 
tarot readings, yeah. astrology readings, uh, coaching sessions, right. whatever it is. Like that's there's a service being provided there yeah. that you shouldn't just take lightly. I wasn't yeah thinking to filter and listen to alone, but I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah. But it just uh, the idea of like people being able to select potentially their own playlist no. i was like that would be dope. that's a great that idea because cool. everyone yes. like pretty much over uh, universally thinks the playlists are not great <laughs> they are, yeah. there's there's four of <laughs> them amazing. and it's like clear that like some speech sound scientists did this and they were not musicians right they're like cover <laughs> bands of like 500 25,600 minutes you know it's like <laughs> no amazing. no no good try and it's like a little uh, awkward the music side of it so they'd probably love to have a real music person help them out <laughs> That's so funny, but that also is just proof that it works because if it's also like bad, annoying music yeah. and it's still doing something, yeah. so you know, there's something yeah. that's maybe why they select it, just like baseline, not good. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> awesome. I'll have links also to, okay. for people who are interested in this. Um, can we talk a little bit about 55th Gene Key stuff? Like sure. I, I know very little about about it but jessa mentions it from time to time and i see it pop up on her patreon like what is the 55th gene key stuff what's going on what are we looking out for yeah so i also don't know a ton i've learned like most of what i've learned from jessa and then like glancing a bit at um the gene keys website which i will say um richard rudd is the gene keys guy and he has been very generous on his website there are um, yeah. all of the like written material from the book about all of the Gene Keys and then audio recordings of him reading um, them are all available for free on his website. And I really recommend people go and check it out. It's so much material and it's so complex and so dense. It's like a whole world similar to if you try to just like be like, oh, well, what is reality transurfing? It's like, uh, or like, yeah. what's the Bible yeah, about? Exactly. You know, it's like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. um, exactly. But it's the 55th Gene Key has something to do with like, you know, the gene keys are personal and they're collective. So the 55th gene key has something to do with the transition that we're going through now that like 2027 thing that people talk about from human design and yeah. the, like crossing over um, out of the um, external authority and into having more of an internal authority. And what I love yeah. about the 55th gene key is that there's a lot of crossover with the nervous system. So it specifically addresses how yeah. we're coming from the um, more of a fear based uh, hind brain or that lower brain where we process, you know, whether we have a threat or not. We're shifting from being primarily oriented to that um, into being more uh, um, oriented on unconditional love. So we're moving out of yeah. judgment and victim and victimhood and towards like creative um, capacity that requires a foundation of like, we're all good. Right. So, if you yes. like if you have someone who can be wrong then there can there's always going to be a victim and a perpetrator and a savior that th yes. those two concepts like right wrong go together with victimhood and so as we let go of the um relying primarily on that system of like threat versus safety, good versus bad, right versus wrong, our nervous system is going to need to um, do less in terms of focusing so much on survival based on like threat versus safety. And that's going to affect yeah. the actual physiology of both our nervous system and our digestive system and like many bodily functions. And this part I've been geeking out on lately that like um, salt is going to end up being like, like for history, we use salt as a purification process yeah and the 55th gene key is working with i'm gonna forget what the i think it's the 64 um which is a water related um i might be getting this part wrong but the salt is working with the water mm. right now and the nervous system because it's t the salt connects to the chemicals that are released when we experience threat and it 
carries mm. it out via water, via our um, sweat and our tears and our pee. Sweat. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're scared or when we're upset, um, we like, like if you ever heard of anxious peeing, that's a fight flight response because you're trying to like totally, lighten totally. your load and you're sweating more um, to lighten your load and you're crying when you're upset. And um, it's gathering up that cortisol and adrenaline and all those other chemicals that are a part of the threat response. And it's um, taking them out of your body. And as we get closer to this change, we're going to need less like over time, we're going to need less salt. And he talked about how kids are going to be born like allergic to meat and stuff because like mm. meat has been perver- preserved via salt for so much of history. And that was like served a function to help us prom- process these fear responses. And so in the right now time period, that's why all the processed food has come in to our society because we need these really high levels of salt because we're having such uh. high levels of victimization. And Uh, as we like rev up for that, we're going to be craving more processed foods, which is so funny because I've been like a super clean eater forever and vegan forever. And over the past six months, I've been like, I'm going to eat a bag of Doritos and I have no idea why. And I'm like, okay. You know, it's a. Speaking of eating a bag of Doritos, I had a bag. So my kid wanted Cheetos for some reason. I was like, I'm not getting you Cheetos. I'm not getting you Cheetos. But he broke me down. And I was like, I'll get you a bag of Cheetos. I gave him Cheetos. And then I ate the rest of the Cheetos. And I was like, I used to like Cheetos as a kid. I don't would never get Cheetos on my own. I'm like, what is going on? That's 2000% how it happened for me, too, because my kid was like, I need Doritos. And I was like, we're not (laughs) we're not a Dorito family, you know, and it's yeah, yeah, totally. And and then I'm like, all right, well, like I'm buying like now he was like went to his other moms and and the half bag of Doritos is there. And I was like, apparently I'm eating this half bag of Doritos and not have to buy him more because I ate his Doritos. Yeah. It's wild. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> That's so funny. Holy shit. We need to talk. This yeah, is like I such mean, a- <laughs> I we do, we do. That's really fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate. It. I know we had like a bunch of Mercury scheduling, and even before that, like I was sick and stuff. I really, Aww. um, I, I know people are gonna love this one, and I we should do something again, maybe for the Patreon or something, because yeah, you're then, yeah. you're you're pretty awesome. Aww, you too. Thanks for cool. having me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, no, I almost forgot my questions. Yeah. What's your favorite color? Rainbow. Cool. <laughs> What's your favorite number? Five. What's your favorite animal? Elephant. Cool. What is a practical tip that you can share with people listening that you think you would like to share that has helped you in your life? Yeah, you can add rocking and humming into your day-to-day and it feels really good Mm -hmm. and it'll support your nervous system. Just rock side to side whenever you think of it and hum like you're sort of rocking a little baby. I love this. That's amazing. That's one of the better ones I've ever heard. Thank you. Uh, This has been great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.
Hope you enjoyed that episode. If you want to connect more with Gazit, nexperiencer.com is the website. You can find out more about the Safe and Sound protocol and do stuff with Gazit. I think you will enjoy it. A reminder, the Patreon is rocking. I'm going to Turkey starting May 10th. I will be there for a month, then I'm coming back. Then I'm going there in a month after that. I will be there for a month, and then I am coming back. I'm doing my best to get as many episodes recorded as possible. I will also be releasing them in Turkey. The Patreon will continue uninterrupted. If the episodes get a little wonky and I don't release for a month, it is what it is. I, I, I'm I trying. Sometimes it's easier. I don't think May is going to be too difficult, but maybe back in July and August, I may miss an episode or two. It is what it is. Deal with it. What can I do? Uh, otherwise, you know, check out all the things. There is a crypto webinar coming up later this month. If you want to look at that, go visit my stand store. And there's also a group manifestation thing. This is for people who were looking for kind of the coaching stuff, but it's nice to get into a group sometime. That is going on, I believe it's April 18th. So you can check that out. And our live stream for the patrons will be on April 25th, most likely. All right, guys, gals, loved ones, everyone else. You're the best. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.